Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and in today's video we're going to finish up the process I started in the last video, so if you haven't seen that yet, there's a link in the post description. And as you can see, the painting has progressed a little bit since you last saw it. I've just done a little more refining. And in a lot of cases, that's what painting flat is all about. You start rough, and then you work your way around the image, looking for problems, and then you polish a little here and a little there. But as a quick reminder, if you look below the post, you'll find links for free brushes and worksheets, as well as in-depth premium series available in the Control Paint store. Well, especially if you're new, it can be really hard to know what's the next step to take. How do I know what to polish? What even needs fixing? Well, in this case, I have reference. And so really what I'm trying to do is make my art match what I'm looking at. And although sometimes you'd just be working from your head. But a great place to start looking is an intersection between two areas of value or color at an edge. So I might say something like the top of this vessel is not bright enough. And that can mean one of two things because this is all relative. I could either darken down the background and automatically that makes the lip look a little bit brighter because all of a sudden it's sort of a relative shift in value. Or I could leave the background as it is and brighten up this lip. And in doing so, it sort of makes that background look a little bit darker. Now, as you saw, I didn't actually change the background value there. I just changed one, and the other one just looks different. It's sort of an optical illusion. And for me, refining a painting just goes like this over and over and over. I notice right next to it, I have another problem. This vessel is supposed to be a bit brighter, so I might brighten up this one. Or, alternatively, I could darken down the background. Either way, this edge becomes more prominent, and they have a relatively higher contrast between the two in value. So you can see it's a bit like tug of war, because if I darken down the background here, all of a sudden it's going to call more attention to this relationship, which will in turn make this seem brighter. And if possibly that makes it too bright, I might then have to retroactively darken the lip of this vessel to make it relatively the correct contrast between the background, which is now a darker value, and the lip. And with a bunch of different surfaces and different elements in your composition, this tug of war can go back and forth until you find just the right balance. Because we are not printers. We don't start in the left-hand corner and progress perfectly across the image. We just don't work that way. It's all a push and pull. You put something down, and then you start comparing. And zooming away from your image is a great way to do that, because this will give you a sort of high-level view. Another thing I like to do is to flip the image. This will show you errors right away. It gives you a nice, fresh look on things. But none of these things I'm doing require me to have lots of layers. So here, one more time, I can flatten all these layers down, zoom in, and keep painting. I can just keep working on those relationships. I might ask myself, is this surface bright enough? Well, maybe not. And then once I brighten it up to match my reference, I begin to have too much contrast between this shape and the shape next to it. So I'll also need to brighten this one as well. And according to my reference, there's even a little more contrast between this surface and the background. So I'll need to darken down the background a bit and in this way, I just work on that overall balance between all the values in my composition. Now, all of this is made way easier if you can do one thing, which is recall these edges. Because in this image, once I get the basics established, I might be changing these values over and over and over, but the shapes are not moving anywhere. So it's hugely valuable for me to be able to have Photoshop save some of these shapes for easy recall. So I can just click once, and then have the ability to paint on one side of an edge or on the other side of an edge. And that is what the edge control series is really all about. It's acknowledging that painting loose doesn't need to mean painting sloppy. There's a way to have both tight edge control and also not a lot of layers. And if this topic is something that interests you, I definitely encourage you to check out edge control in the control paint store today. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.